is a bone out of place, pinching off and exiting spinal nerve. You're a chiropractic patient or considering. You're a doctor of chiropractic, maybe surfing for content. Maybe you're a chiropractic lover, maybe a skeptic. I don't know, for whatever reason you're here and you're trying to get a handle on this thing, this elusive chiropractic subluxation. I get it because embarrassingly, too many chiropractors themselves seem to be confused about it as well. In a nutshell, the vertebral subluxation is a biomechanical neurological scenario associated with abnormal motion of a spinal bone. It's at the very core of chiropractic theory and it's been the subject of intense debate for over a hundred years. The earliest usage of the term subluxation dates back to a physician whose name may ring a bell. He, uh, he had an oath named after him it's about 2,500 years ago. Uh, yeah, Hippocrates. He described localized physical findings associated with joint pain and the results of manipulation of them. But as for chiropractic, its founder D.D. Palmer's hypothesis was that the subluxation was a partial displacement of a spinal vertebra such that it impinged upon nerves exiting the spinal canal thereby causing all kinds of ill effects downstream to organs, glands, muscles, and so forth. This circumstance then, the dysfunctioning spinal segment, this subluxation, was the focus of a correction which Dee Dee Palmer termed the chiropractic adjustment. And remember, in Palmer's day, 1895, this bone out of place pinching spinal nerve concept made perfect sense. One look at a spinal model um, confirms that the idea seems totally plausible. However, uh, simply stated, the bone out of place subluxation theory of chiropractic is wrong. We need to dismiss it. Great advances in our knowledge in neurology, physiology, chemistry, anatomy in the last 130 years simply have led to new conclusions and we need to follow along with the science. What? So now you're saying the chiropractic subluxation does not exist? No, absolutely not. I'm saying no such thing. I'm saying that we chiropractors are not unpinching exiting spinal nerves with our adjustments. We're still making life-changing things happen for patients day in and day out with our manipulative treatments. But as 21st century doctors of chiropractic, we need to deep six the antiquated, outdated dogma surrounding the definition of subluxation. It's a wonderful, amazing chapter in the storied history of our great profession, but we need to see it as it is, an early building block in the foundation. It pains me to say that many modern day chiropractors still promote this notion of the pinching off of the spinal nerve exiting the spinal canal as a result of a misaligned vertebral segment. Bone out of place, pinching off and exiting spinal nerve, causing disruption of everything downstream from that nerve. So you wanna know what a vertebral subluxation is? It's a spinal bone twisted out of place pinching off and exiting spinal nerve, very similar to closing down the flow of water from a garden hose. Okay, so now you're telling me the subluxation does not cause outgoing nerve flow pinching. So what is the problem with this thing anyway? Well, the problem is that it affects nerve flow to the brain, incoming from receptors all over the body, not exiting the brain, by a pinching off of a uh, spinal nerve. Did you know that there's much more information passing up the spinal cord to the brain than there is down from the brain? That's right, there are specialized nerve receptors located all over the body in every tissue, continually updating the brain on everything from blood pressure to the amount of stretch and tension on your left hamstring at any particular second of the day. Your brain makes all of its decisions based on the sum total of all of this sensory input it gets. So spinal subluxation, I actually prefer the more descriptive joint complex dysfunction, affects feedback from a spinal joint by altering the specialized receptors within that joint that feed back into the brain. 
For you anatomy geeks, those are called mechanical receptors and nociceptors. If you take one thing from this video and only one, make it this. Altered joint mechanics will always, always, always alter sensory feedback to the brain. And interestingly, these receptors connect and communicate directly with the brain. So quite obviously, they have very important functions in the, uh, in the central nervous system. So you've heard the term garbage in, garbage out. Well, here you go. Altered input from joints always causes faulty output from the brain. So appropriate mechanical receptor signaling is critical for the brain to be able to form a myriad of functions. In fact, Guyton wrote that if sensory signals are eliminated, the cerebrum would actually approach a state of permanent coma. Motion problems at spinal levels can not only cause the expected local problems like uh, spasm, pain, tenderness, swelling, but also the many downstream effects that we see in our chiropractic offices every day. Numbness, tingling, weakness, vertigo, range of motion problems, headaches, spasms, etc. So look, the vertebral subluxation is as alive and troublesome as it's always been. And its correction via the chiropractic adjustment is every bit as effective and important and sometimes life-changing as ever. We modern docs of chiropractic need to update our knowledge base and our understanding of the current state of the art in neurology, anatomy, and so forth, especially of the subluxation complex, in order to best serve our patients and our profession. And for anyone super interested in this, and especially the docs of chiropractic who might be watching, I'm gonna link a couple of my favorite papers, super important papers on this topic, and I think that it should be mandatory for every chiropractor on the planet to read these and be familiarized with them. But listen, until we see you again, yours in vibrant health, Dr. J.